Hey guys, welcome and welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Janelle aka Nelly. So as you can tell by the title, I get ready with me. But I'm talking about Jaclyn Hill Cosmetics whole fiasco and things to me that are kind of way more important than that at the same time. So as everyone knows, Jaclyn Hill's lipsticks have mold in them. Like they literally have mold in them and people are trying to defend her and <laughs> it's not working. Last thing I heard is that she didn't really say anything. She's like, oh, I'm still trying to figure out what happened. And I'm just like, they're old, they're moldy. And that's what happens when they're old and moldy. Like, I don't understand. And I just, it's just for me personally, Jacqueline Hill has always been one of those people that I always question why does she have so many followers. Like, I'm not gonna, like, talk a lot of crap, but it's just, like, with all the scandals that she has been involved in, um, no. Like, with her friend saying the N-word in her Snapchat, and then she had to do an apology statement if it wasn't recorded, and she didn't really think about it, that people probably want nobody else would have known, but of course people know, this is the internet, everybody knows this, most things. And so, to an extent. So, I was just... That was one of those moments where I was like, I don't like her. And then I noticed with every single launch that she has, there's always a problem. And um, Yuki did a video talking about her for a bit. Like saying like she feels like she's cursed when it comes to launches. Because like I said, every launch that she has, something always happens. That's why I just never really support her launches in the first place. And I just, I didn't really care about her. Like, the only thing from Jacqueline Hill that I actually had was, like, the Champagne Pop blush duo she did with Becca Cosmetics. That's it. Because the, the highlighter was cute and so was the blush. And so I decided to buy it and then it broke on me, like, a year ago. So, the whole lipstick type of thing, like, first of all, you're... When I heard that she was making her own makeup brand launch and that it was, um lipsticks so i was kind of like mm, no because everybody has the lipstick well technically everybody has everything it's just your name and so i didn't care i watching nima tang's video where she like saw the fur and she saw the beads or whatever and then um some people were tweeting that it's mold this one girl i follow she like her dad's a doctor and he's like, and her dad's like, that is mold, don't put that in your mouth. People are literally getting like little cysts or stuff on their lips. And it's, it's so stupid, it's really stupid. So I don't, I don't really understand how people still will still support her after this. And then Nikki Tutorials is over here like, if this is true or say, <sighs> Nikki Tutorials is just putting herself into a bad area again. I actually bought eyeshadow primer. That's what I'm using. I'm using the Smashbox 24 Hour Photo Finish Shadow Primer. I just bought it yesterday and we're gonna see how this works. I noticed yesterday when I tried it, because I only put on my lid that I should go a little bit higher because I noticed that doesn't really blend as well for areas where I tend to blend higher. So yeah, we're gonna figure that out. With the whole Jaclyn Hill fiasco crap going on, I do feel like there is more important things to talk about. Like, yeah, there's people with mold allergies and that they should be warned about it. But there's more, like, important things globally to talk about. Literally, like, a, a civil war or something going on in Sudan. Like, millions of people are getting killed. Originally, it was a pre peaceful protest. But now people are being killed just because they don't like the person who is their their dictator or president or something. Ugh, these eyebrows. Um, and um, that's fucked up because it's just crazy. And then they are raping men and women and children and killing them and putting them into the Nile River. But this is all happening in Sudan and I'm just like why isn't this on the news? Why isn't it this getting as much coverage as when the um, church in Europe but that's historically known for I think like in Notre Dame and all this stuff. Was it Notre Dame? I don't remember. But like that that yeah you know I'm talking about that historical place. Like that was sad too but I feel like this is slightly more important than currently. Like currently there are millions of people dying and protesting to have equal rights and just to have pretty much basic humane rights and is not being on the news in 
the Western. Like, it makes no sense to me whatsoever. And then I saw this tweet where, like, of course, there's not a lot of um, news coverage over here because they're black and they're Muslim and they're African. Like, of course, they don't have a lot of coverage. Which is just, if that is, like, that, I can honestly see that because that's very sad and it's just, it's just agitating. And so, Jackie, I know posted the link to for the donation on her Instagram and her Twitter. There's way more important things to be talked about right now. The film, When They See Us. So like, I want to do like a whole video of why I haven't watched all of it yet. But I'm gonna see it like a little bit in this video. So, when They See Us, which was directed by Ava Davri. Davri. She directed Selma and A Wrinkle in Time. I love her work. Uh, <laughs> she directed a film a short limited series on Netflix based on the Central Park Five. Um, there's only four episodes and my mom finished the series. I haven't finished the series yet because in the first episode <laughs> it was just, it was just a lot. I'm like watching I'm seeing like a lot of recommended videos of people's reactions where they like the show broke them and how it's like our reality because it is our reality <laughs> like you don't even have to think about it. It's literally right in front of your face. It literally is our reality. Like earlier this year, I was diagnosed with anxiety and I noticed that like the only thing that I know for sure right now that triggers it is literally injustice to people just because of their skin color. So, like I will, for instance, I was watching um, the show The Resident. I love that show. And they were doing an episode based on the woman, the black woman, who went to the hospital because she felt weird she was perfectly healthy. She just needed to get like an emergency C-section. The doctor like did a tear somewhere inside of her. And so she was internally bleeding for hours. Like the the husband, you see him trying to get the nurse's attention. You see the, the doctor's assistant, the resident person, not like the main person, but, like the Indian guy, Dr. Bajash or something like that. You see him trying to do his best to make sure she's being taken care for because he was the one who knows all the blood in her catheter. He called the, do the doctor who did the c-section he's just like well she literally just had a c-section so of course she's bleeding but she was bleeding but he t told her he told him she's bleeding a lot like we need to double check if everything is okay and she they waited six hours six hours and she started um, seizing up, and at the end of the episode, she died. Like she literally, like she literally, gave birth to her daughter, and she had another daughter back at home, who who missed like, right, who <laughs> who. She was on FaceTime with, like, right before she started season up, and her mother, like, her husband's alone. So, yeah. She died, and it happens, like, in chance of and one in every four black women, and then I'm a black woman, and, like, most of my friends are black, so if it happens to any one of us, like, two, multiples of us, and so that's, like, that broke me down. Like, <laughs> That gave me a whole mental breakdown. I had a whole, like, I was up the whole night. And, yeah, so, like, and usually when I watch, like, documentaries on um, stuff that happened to black people and all that, it, I usually kind of almost break down, but I mainly broke down the most during that time. And so, when I was watching When They See Us, I so almost had a breakdown in the first episode. So, I'm taking my time with it, honestly. There's only, like, four episodes. But I'm just taking my time with it because I need to, it's going to piss me off because it's actually happened in real life and that stupid prosecutor is just like, they're making me look like a bad person when I'm like, well, you are a bad person. Like you literally, like what really made me mad? You literally fabricated it. And then she was warned multiple times by people in the first episode, don't do this. And what did she do? Continue to do it. Corey Wise, like from like from what I've seen so far is that he kind of reminds me of my brother and that 
that's really gonna get to me because like my brother like i love him to death he's kind of dumb but i love him and um <laughs> and um hmm. let me just start with this one he is a really sweet person and he's so sweet that he tries to help people as much as he can and girls tend to manipulate that so yeah so he tends to get manipulated like he's usually the one in the friendship that gets manipulated and so I usually like try to be like hey yo bro if you see me not paying attention to you when you talk about particular people you will notice that I don't like them for a reason so the fact that Corey Wise wasn't even on the list he was just there to support his like so his friend doesn't become isn't alone and then he was 16 and he was sent to jail he was sent to Rikers he was sent to multiple prisons he didn't do anything like I could literally see that happening to my brother if we stayed like in the Bronx or something like if we stayed in New York or something or like in a city like I could see some type of crap like that happening some type of injustice because he wouldn't do it but he's a black man so they just automatically think he would and so that part is definitely gonna get to me when I watch the show because I already figured that out since Corey Wise always kind of reminds me of him. And I pray every day that stuff like that cease to exist. But you know, the main reason why I haven't watched the series so far, it is on my, it's still on my Netflix. I literally like could plan on watching it tomorrow or tomorrow or Friday because today's Wednesday when I record this. And um, I think, oh, I got the wrong primary, and uh, I think those two days will be the best because I don't have anything planned on those days, and I think that'll just work a lot better for me if I, like, feel like just crying, I, I can do it without feeling as bad. Is this running out? Yes. It's finally running out. It's one of the products I'm trying to finish. That's why. So, like, if you have a friend who hasn't watched it, there's probably, like, multiple reasons why. This is people of color, specifically black people's reality, honestly. So, just think about that. Like, I'm still trying to figure out what triggers my anxiety, but I already know for a fact that topics like that triggers it extremely hard. Okay, much of the serious talk, let's go back to makeup. I ordered, I have the Juvia's Place Foundation, okay? Let me grab it. I have the Juvia's Place Foundation. I got the shade Cano 150. And um, I haven't used it. I haven't swatched it. All I did was just take off the little safety tab of plastic, and that's it. This is the bottle, and I thought it was gonna be bigger, but this is cute for traveling. But um, Juvia's place is fucking up because you know why? <laughs> I understand that they're. Okay. Box. So, oh wait, I'm yeah, exactly. Um, I used to play video games. Ah, okay, so. Right after, like, not right after, but like after a couple hours I recorded this video, I got an email from Juvia's Place that my order shipped. So hopefully all that constant badgering <laughs> for them got them to ship my package or they were just, they were just taking too long. So yeah, so yeah, so yeah, I will have the video up hopefully within the next week. A small company and that they're a black owned business they're a small company I get that I get that however um usually I order from them before like on their website when the website was really busy and that's like how I got like half the stuff I have from them and I still receive their stuff like within a week and I heard about their customer service is kind of wonky that's why I kind of wish that's why I bought the foundation on Ulta because like if I don't like the shade and I don't like it I could just return it on Ulta because it'll just be a lot easier for me and so <laughs> when I found out that the concealers and the setting powders were not on Ulta.com uh, the back of my head's kind of like just wait but then they never said when it's going to be on Ulta so I decided to order it um, this past Friday. Today is the 12th, so it's Wednesday. Wednesday. Well, the 7th, and so I ordered it the 7th, and all I got was an invoice so far. I DM'd them on their GVS Place support page a couple, a few times, and I actually went on their customer service website and e tried to email 
it costs my service website and I say try is because when I hit send my email will just automatically say hey you can't send an email to them I'm just like what I tried it twice they can't email me my confirmation email but I went on the website just to check on my order on my account and it just says like not processed and I leave and then they say oh you left this the warrior palette I'm like I didn't even <laughs> like I didn't even um look at your palettes why are you saying like I was looking at the warrior palette so I don't know what's going on with them all I know is that I DM them a couple of times and they have not answered a couple I DM them this morning and so if they don't answer to me by the end of the day because at first I was going to wait till like 12, but now I'm kind of like, they are a business. They probably are every single one DMs. I'm being nice, okay? Because <laughs> like, I work in retail and I know, I know how customers are. This foundation is so freaking red, yo. I'm trying to, this is so red. Oh my gosh. And so customers are, I really do. Um, it's just that. I've tried to be nice. And then like this, I commented on one of their Instagram posts and said hey um all i got was an invoice and then this guy the end me no this guy commented saying that he does like unboxing videos on instagram i looked at it and he ordered two of the zulu palette the zulu palettes one for him and one for his mom and it didn't go through like they only sent him one like he already waited two weeks and then you you misplaced or you just don't give him one of his palettes. I have to put foundation on my neck today. If you guys are like a long time knowing me, I hate putting foundation on my neck. I usually just rock it out, but today I have no choice. It was ridiculous. And then like you see the Juvia's Place support, like DM, like message him on in the comments and other people. And I'm over here like I commented that I'm waiting on my order too. Why did you respond back to me? So look. Juvia's Place has always been one of those companies where I really like their products. I really do want to support them because they're a black-owned business, especially an African-owned business. But then again, also, I know them. <laughs> I know they petty. Like, I've seen the pettiness. Like, with the whole colored rain incident, when their palettes were similar. Not the same, but they were pretty similar. And so, and they're like, oh, they copied us. And I'm like, they really went through that much extent just to copy you like really I hold Juvia's Place standard up to like ColourPop because ColourPop is kind of is like a small business but they release they release a lot more products so don't <laughs> believe they release a lot more products but I still hold them up to the standard of Juvia's Place of, of um ColourPop because ColourPop messed up in one of my orders the Mar palette I was waiting for the Mar palette and they usually ship out to me pretty fast and I noticed it's been a week and so I co commented on one of their Instagram posts and they told me to they sent me a DM and sent me the link to the support for ColourPop and I emailed them and it was shipped out the next day. Like it, like that's what I kind of expect in the company. I understand that you probably getting a lot more than you thought, but since your business is growing a lot, I would expect you as a business, it doesn't matter at this point, as a business to at least hire more people for customer service. Like it's, it's not that hard. It's really not. Cause <laughs> I don't own a business, maybe I don't know what I'm saying, but as a customer's point of view, get your shit together because I'm about to just buy your products only on Ulta and not from your website. And you're, and I would like to support you guys on your website from time to time like I normally do, but I'm about to just buy your stuff only at Ulta and call it a day. James Charles, Tati Less Book, Gabriel Zamora, and Jaffe Sai all them up as usual for no reason whole fiasco was something to watch it was that was an experience that whole okay i'm just gonna say this if you true okay so for tati right for tati i am subscribed to tati for tati my guy if this person was bothering you so long why don't you just stop being friends with him like bruh like you're 37 years old <laughs> like, I don't know. I'm only 21 going on 22, and I'm already tired of people's shenanigans. Like, I don't know how you did that at 30 years old just for that. A. B. James Charles. I never liked you in the first place, so it doesn't even fucking matter. Honestly, if the Predator things were true, I I still feel like Lil' Key might be, because honestly, would not be surprised if someone came out with a lot of receipts and said, you lied multiple times, 
and said and called him a predator, I would not be surprised because honestly, I see him pulling that type. He's very sneaky. And he's very calculating. And he's very manipulative. But he's been like that since he first came out. So like, Gabriel Zamora inserting himself for no damn reason. You know, he's been there longer, but you're literally Nikita Dragon's second best friend. Like, once Bretman comes up, who are you? Like, and then Jeffree Star is disgusting. So I don't understand why he put himself. Nobody even mentioned him. And yet he still inserted himself. I don't understand, yo. Like, that's your friend. That is her business. And she handles it her way. And you just just be like oh okay like i'm that friend like if you just put yourself into unnecessary drama right and i'm your friend i'm just, just gonna sit there and stare at you and just be like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and don't ask for my opinion because i will tell you my honest opinion you're not gonna like it start came out here with all these receipts and then the way it ended some shit happened behind the scenes something happened behind the scenes where lawyers were probably getting involved that's why they blocked off so hard so yeah, and then for Tati, you have been hanging out with Jeffrey. It's very obvious. Like I already know you guys are friends, but you have been hanging hanging out with Jeffrey because that's some type of shit Jeffrey Star would do, and I don't like that. So I haven't really been watching her videos since I'm subscribed to her, but I really haven't been watching her since that whole fiasco. It's not just because of that; it's just the way you did it. Is rude. And I understand that, like, like Gabriel said, you posted it on your Insta story, and like you said in the video, that since you make it public, you make all of it public. True. True, 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 true. But you don't have to make every single damn thing public. If I'm making everything public, right, about someone, and they can sue me, at least the truth is out. This makeup community shit. It's annoying. And then people say like, oh my god, makeup community is shambles. Really it's not. It's just those people. <laughs> it's just those white people that people idolize a lot for some reason. I don't understand why. Jacqueline Hill, Jeffree Star, James Charles. I feel like people should idolize um, for people. Bretman, because he literally be minding his own business. He literally says that so many times. I'm just minding my own business. Um, oh, let me show you like a little trick that I've been doing lately with my makeup. To make it last longer so I have noticed that when I like after I set my foundation and stuff with the powder all over my face I like to preset with the morphe continuous setting spray it's running out I got spares so I preset with the morphe setting spray and then I do like the rest of my makeup and then after I finish doing my highlighter and stuff I set it with my Urban Decay D slick setting spray let that dry down, put on my lashes, and I'm done. I don't have to worry about it for, like, the whole day. Like, for my, um, top videos for oily skin, the Estee Lauder, she already lasts, like, over 14 hours. I wore it for an eight-hour shift, and I, I did not have to blow out once. <laughs> I was chilling. I got back home. I was so good. So, like, try it. If you have oily skin, try the Morphe skin, like, the Morphe setting spray before, after you set with powder. Do the rest of your face. And then do the D slick because I think D slick is better than all night or whatever your favorite one is and try it and see how it goes but anyway back to the back to James Charles uh <laughs> Jeffree Star uh no the whole thing like I really feel like you should support um Bretman Rock because he just be minding his business or Jackie Ida if you're like looking for a woke but fun but and Liddy Bop woman and okay okay every time <laughs> every Okay, every time you guys say something, like, there's so many scandals with the majority, like, with a good amount of these white YouTubers, right? And that's way worse than what Jackie Hanna did. Like, yeah, Jackie Hanna framed Petty Page for, like, or, uh, like, insinuated that Petty Page did something, but it was, that's what, what else did she do? What else did she do? Like, Jackie Hanna says white people don't get out the way. You don't. <laughs> you really don't. Like, what do you? Like, you guys really think that she's racist, but she's really not. She just be calling y'all out on your your fuck shit, and y'all get mad because she's calling you the fuck out. Get the fuck out of my face out of here. Get the fuck out of my face. Oh, Jackie and I just do a lot of giveaways. She does it on her website. <laughs> For the black beauty community, she is the pillar black girl. Which is kind of sad that we have, like, the pillars, but it's, it's okay. 
uh, no, it's not. It's not okay. But like, at least it's Jackie Ina who actually stands up for her things. You know what I mean? Or another good person to follow is Nima Tang. I love her. She's so cool. She does the Darkest Shade series and like she shows out about the um how uninclusive the beauty industry is. Like she did a whole video based on bronzers. And when Fenty came out with bronzers, I was hoping that it could at least bronze Nima. It didn't. It's like a nice blush on her, but like if they had like a couple more like but at least she called them out on it because she does like my eyebrows look so crusty and I just got them waxed yesterday. And uh, so with Jackie Ida, think about it. Why am I offended? Why am I so irked right now over something that's so stupid yet so true about me sometimes? You know what I mean? And so I just want y'all to think that. Um, Jeffree Star literally says so many racist things and contradicts himself all the fucking time. And yet you guys are still like, he changed. No, 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 no. He changed. He's definitely changed. Get the fuck out of my face with that bullshit. Because he did not. He really did not. So, if you're going to come up on my channel and be like, Jeffree Star changed, then leave. Unsubscribe. Goodbye. I don't... I don't need that type of negativity in my life. Nico. XO Nico. I like his videos. They're pretty good. Poetic Drugs. He does do, like, a lot of videos. But, like, follow him. His highlighter is popping. Um, I Am Todd War. I Am Todd War. He's good. I like him. Ben Yabula, you guys already know me. Like, I like Benny. This one girl, I'm gonna put her picture up. <laughs> I can't pronounce her name. She's like really dark skin. She's so pretty. And she does like a like really, really good eye makeup. Like really, really good. And um Yuki, she's cool. Patrick Star. Know her from like a meme. I'm gonna put her picture up. I watched her video yesterday. Or for like commentary on like black people related stuff um maybe leah gordon the mademoiselle i am alejo um these two other people that i've been watching lately that i don't remember their name at the moment for some reason there's like a lot of people of color on youtube you just for some reason gotta search to crap for high and low for them and i don't know why oh and too much mouth too much mouth makes good videos why can we this girl tweeted like can we have like a new token black girl? And I'm like, why do should we? There's always like the token um gay person who's always white. Like, can we have like at least like can we have like one like at least one each? Like a white person, a black person, a Filipino person, an Asian person, an Indian person, a Pacific person, every single type of person underneath the world. Not just one white guy. Like that one that one video with white guy's like, I'm the new supreme. I'm like y'all hear something because i sure don't yesterday upon the milk makeup mascara it was bomb but i'm trying to finish this urban decay or until it goes bad um <laughs> mascara supposedly is already already bad but she's still wet she's still clocking so i'm gonna keep on using it for the beauty community we should not have like one token person because like to me the ultimate token person in the beauty community community is honestly jacqueline hill like Jaclyn Hill come like collab with everybody and their mama and I was always so annoyed because like when I first came into the makeup world all I saw was her face and I'm like well she must be like a pretty cool person and I just couldn't get with her her vibe at the moment so I was like nah I don't like her she's just too uppity for me collab with Morphe so many times she collabed with Sigma before Morphe a little a good amount of times makeup geek fiasco Becca with this whole champagne pop type of shit I feel like ColourPop collabs with more deserving people to collab with than most brands. Because I feel like most brands go for either Jaclyn Hill or Jeffree Star or like James Charles. That's it. And um, for for the black people, it was usually Jackie Ina. But I see, I do see collaboration with Ellery. She collabed with ColourPop. Makeup Shayla collaborated with ColourPop. So that's good. Alyssa Ashley collab with Elf. Monica. No, Iris Bellin. Iris Bellin. She did like a lip palette with Elf, I think. Monica Styles. I don't think she collab with anybody. It's my it's my Ray Ray collab with BH Cosmetics twice. I loved it. Jackie Ina made my shade. 
in the Too Faced Born This Way Foundation, so I'm very happy for that. I want Alyssa Ashley to collab with Fenty Beauty because she loves that brand. She rocks for that brand so hard that she, she literally deserves <laughs> to collab with that brand, honestly. She be rocking hard, and I'm just like, yo. And she gets her honest opinion, so I'm kind of like, you know, she... She likes Fenty Beauty. So. See, for my eyes today, I used Juvia's Place, um, the Zulu palette. I put the pink first in my crease, and then I put the purple to, like, define the crease. And then I grabbed the Magic Mini palette by Juvia's Place and grabbed the shade right here. And then I went back to the Zulu palette. <laughs> and from underneath the eye, I grabbed this purple towards the end right here, but mainly used this blue, this teal. Because I wanted to. And so now I'm about to use their face palette. The Saharian Blush Part 2. Like you see, I own a lot from them. And I really do like their products. But they're just not me. For my face, I use Too Faced Peachy Primer outside. And I use the Becca Ever Matte Poreless in the inside. And I use the Maybelline Super Stay Foundation in Mocha. And then I got the NARS Soft Matte Complete Concealer in Amande. I used the Patrick Star powder underneath my eyes. I used the Fenty powder on the outside. I used the Benefit um, Goof Proof Brow, the bigger one. And then I used the Essence Bake Me Brow, Brow Gel. And then I used the, the NYX Slide On Glider, definitely a turn on. Extreme Eye Pencil in Azure Blue. <laughs> um, I used a little bit of the Fenty Bronzer just to like brighten it up a little bit. I use Urban Decay Perversion Mascara and so now I'm gonna go into these two blush highlighters right here. I'm always mixing these two personally. It just looks so nice. That's my highlight. Because <laughs> why not? But um I feel like at the beauty community we should not have just one token black person. Or just one token person. I feel like everybody should at least have a chance to collab with someone. Like a known person or like a person with a decent amount of following. It's always been like the same type of people. And I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm tired of seeing the same damn faces collabing with all these damn brands. And I'm just tired. Manny and MUA collab with the brand like a couple times. And that's nice for him. Keita Dragon has her own makeup line. And once she extends it, actually comes with something that I'm, I'm interested in investing in, I'll, I'll try it. But right now, I don't need color corrector. And I don't use pressed powder anymore. And now I'm going to go for these two blushes. A little bit of this one also. Just mix those three. I never use the brown in this one. It's orange. I don't need that. <laughs> and put on as my blush. This is a good blush brush, by the way. I really want to see um, Yuki collab with any brand, honestly. She loves colors, so I expect a colorful palette from her if she does a palette. Or pretty cute lashes. I want to see Bemi collab with Melt because I think she'd be good with like Melt cosmetic. I think, ooh, if we see like a person of color collab with Urban Decay, Liddy Bob, because I love Urban Decay. The D6 Science Bag. See too much mouth collab with Mented. I don't know why. I just feel like she should collab with Mented. You know what? I'd collab with Urban Decay in a heartbeat. If they ever offered that for me, bet. Like I love Urban Decay. I love it. I'll do such a pretty ballot too. They have like really good pigmentation. I'll be back. Shout out to Bebby and Bula for making this wig for me. I don't know what hair she used, but it's really good because I haven't washed it or put anything in it. And I had it for a couple weeks. I am done. Uh, lashes I'm wearing is by Lashes by Ash Smell, and I think I'm wearing Flirtatious. Flirtatious? Yeah, I think I'm wearing Flirtatious. Um, on my lips I put on ColourPop BFF3 lip liner on the inside, and then on the outside for the ColourPop Pitch lip liner with the Beauty Bakery, what is this, Snickerdoodle lip gloss on top. But there you go. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed me ranting. I believe I got what I was talking about, and I don't feel like, like going through my footage right now to see what I was talking about. But um, what I think you guys should get overall from this video is that I don't understand why people like support Jacqueline Hill <laughs> um, and Jeffree Star and James Charles. Uh, um, Gabriel Zamora is always, he's just there. Uh, Nikita Jordan's cool. 
stop playing just one pillar person for the beauty community. It's gonna take some time for people to watch the show when they see us. Yeah, that's what I'm about, it, about it. Like, just be consciously aware of who you watch as the beauty community. Because for me, the beauty community is not James Charles, Tati, Jeffree Star, none of that, okay? My beauty community consists of Too Much Mouth, Yuki, Bemi, Todd Warp, Poetic Drugs. Nico, Jackie Ida, Alyssa Ashley, Arnell Armand, He Flawless, Zachary Campbell, those type of people. I am Alejo. <laughs> that's who I watch on YouTube. So that's just a few of the channels I watch on YouTube. So, oh, I didn't do a big recommendation of the week. Let me grab that. <laughs> if you follow me on Instagram, you will know that I usually do like book recommendation of the weeks, TV show or movie of the week, and makeup recommendation of the week i just do that because i asked y'all and you guys said yeah so <laughs> you guys said all of it so i was like all right cool so i don't know if i recommend this yet but friday black is but it was a new york times bestseller last year 2018 and it's it's pretty it's pretty good it's, it's a collection of short stories by nana kwame ajay brenya and he's from new york he went to sunny alabani and um <laughs> It's not like a like a long read. It's only like it's only like not even almost two hundred pages. Not there like one hundred ninety four, including acknowledgments. And it's pretty much about Black history, but short story type of fiction. And then there's like a little bit about the history of Black Friday and what Black men and Black people go through in general, just fictionalized. And it's really good. And um, so read it. That's my book recommendation of the week. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this. And I hope to see you guys in my next video of whatever I talk about. <laughs>